Now we got Sleepy Time Gas Grenade. I think two of these guys would have been knocked out by now. That's a fast acting grenade. There they go, like dominoes. Six people involved in this operation now. For a heist like this, a store that size, uh, they should be using three people. I don't know why they're wearing red NASA suits. Astronaut robbers. Hey everybody, I'm Camden Pace. And back in the day, I took down a couple banks, armed bank robberies. Been there, know a little bit about heists, and also know what it's like to get caught and be in that uh, in-between spot that nobody wants to be in. So let's check out some gameplay on Jewel Heist in Grand Theft Auto V. The hell is this place? Garment factory. Looking like he's got a sense of purpose. Oh, coming up on a guy who's uh, not doing so well. What do you got? Oh, some kind of deal going down here. Holy grail, must be a huge jewel. Okay, tough job ahead. So we got the guy who's got the inside knowledge. Uh-oh, this guy's deep in debt and owes, owes somebody, Martin Madezzo. Who am I? I think Martin. Madezzo, I think it's a little down right now. I mean, where's the action here? Where, where, where are we going with this? Any explosions, anybody blowing glass out a window? Smashing grabs. This is a plot development scene here for a video game. I don't think I've seen this before. Oh my God, this guy walks slow. I hope he's not taking him with him. Running red lights. He's on a mission. Okay, he's walking in as a customer, it seems. No mask. Hello, how you doing? Casing out where everything is. He's acting like he's just gonna do some legitimate business here. Jeep, thank God. The same my wife we're talking about. <laughs> My God, this is like a lifetime movie. This is painful. Our rings start at eight, our pendants start at 12. But you know, jewelry's really marked up about 5,000% anyway, so I think he, he did well trying to lowball them. Personally, I preferred banks. I thought stores were a lot more high risk, and I think it involves a lot more uh, middle dealing in that you have to have somebody to fence the jewelry to in order to get any kind of liquidity and cash, whereas you rob a bank, you've got cash immediately, and you don't even have any middleman. But I prefer to stay away from stores. I think there's a lot more um, variables that could go wrong than in a bank. Um, it's a tighter space, a lot of unpredictable things can happen, plus then in order to even access the jewelry, you are gonna have to smash it and grab it while controlling the environment with all the other staff and clients. Everybody got a good description of his face. This is not how I would pull a jewel heist. Not at all. Oh, and he's a parkour athlete. And he's doing it in a full suit. Didn't split the pants, hadn't split the seams on the jacket, even though it's tailor-made. What is this cat doing? So he's cased a jewelry store, uh, what I'm gathering right now. He asked the price for a couple of things, see how much they were. And now it looks like we're putting together a strategic storyboard. Man, this beats anything I've ever seen. I think he would have been better just smashing the car into the window and grabbing a bunch of stuff and running. That's a lot, that seems to be a big middle step to put gas into the building. Maybe they could have just come in at night. It would have been a lot easier if they had just learned the alarm code. This is about as hard to follow as a Tom Clancy novel. We're taking on hackers. Okay, we're involving way too many people in this plan. This is very complicated, very intricate. And they're talking about, let's take a chance on him. Right? You know, there should never be a chance on anybody. And you're talking about five people involved, six people involved in this operation now. They've got, they've got too many people involved here. You know, for a heist like this, a store that size, uh, they should be using three people, one to secure the exit, uh, one to secure the people, the other giving orders to one of the sales staff. Uh, the person who's also controlling the customers can also hand off a lot of the jewelry themselves. But not more than four people, four at the most, including that, um, the guy who evidently had the inside knowledge on how to pull the stunt, not for a store that size. And they should be doing this at night uh, rather than come in like they're doing broad daylight. It's not gonna be an issue because everything's gonna go just fine. The, um... I don't know why they're wearing red NASA suits. Astronaut robbers. I hope you can manage the truck with the- Okay, oh my, oh, what on earth? A front flying forward roll on concrete steps. And he is okay. It looks like he just kicked a cat. Total disregard for any kind of traffic rules. We're gonna bring all kinds of attention to ourselves on this one. Oh, tap the brakes. Now he's into a turn going the wrong way. And it's broad daylight. You know, this is not how you would start off any kind of heist whatsoever. I don't even know, where's the rest of the crew? Now we got sleepy time gas grenade. Oh, he took a spill on the, on the front 
forward roll. I love her a lot. I just... I think two of these guys would have been knocked out by now. That's a fast-acting grenade. There they go. Like dominoes. Everybody's down. Okay, they're taking all kinds of stuff out. Nobody's covering the door in case anybody tries to come in. Let's see how long it's taking them. It doesn't look like they know exactly what they're going for. You know, I really think if this were done right, they would have just had all the bags laid out, grabbed everything, thrown them all in. We can perfectly see his face. You know they got surveillance cameras in the jewelry store. Once that alarm is tripped, they need to be out in about 45 seconds. They could have cruisers somewhere nearby the location that are gonna get dispatched to that scene. And at that point, they need to cut their losses if they haven't gotten everything they want. They should already have that exit strategy, a vehicle waiting, or in this case, they've got their motorcycles. You know, they can always pull another heist a later day if something kind of went left with their plan. But they need to get out really quick and good rule of thumb is 45 seconds once that alarm's tripped. And 45 seconds can feel like a long time. Wide open, up, oh, here we go, we've hit a snag. And it takes out the security officer to the ground. Up, oh, I don't know that front tire on that curb, I don't think that would have gone so well in real life. Well, this is kind of a strange getaway. I mean, some people like motorcycles. And, oh my God, off the freeway ramp. Is this a convenient tunnel under the bite, under the pass? Yes, it must be. Well, maybe they, I don't know, maybe they kind of had that part planned. That's not too bad an idea. I guess this is sort of a, so, oh, I think that would have done him right there. Hitting the rear tire against the wall, I think that would have totally wiped him out and it would have been a little bit more realistic if he'd have done probably a, they are bumping walls and hitting. Where are they going, I wonder? Here, okay, here we are. And over the cop car. He's totally doing a state patrol pit maneuver on that police car, spun him out. And onward we go. Where are these guys going? I'm surprised there aren't any, like, there hasn't been a lot of gunfire. They haven't set up a perimeter anywhere on these guys. No one's called ahead. Okay, they are riding the bikes up on the truck. Okay, that's kind of a... That's a classic maneuver. Don't know why they did it right out in the open. It probably would have made more sense to do that under a bridge, under a freeway. Okay, I think this, I think the game drags a lot. Uh, and in real life, just, oh, we just ran over two pedestrians, completely going right into the safe house. I mean, this is one hell of a novel. I don't know where, I mean, this is really lacking a lot of action. I don't know where the explosions are, where the fireworks are where any of the gunfire play is. I think given that they had a guy who had access to the blueprints, the ductwork and everything else, it would have been realistic to think he could have somehow gotten the alarm code and they should have pulled the heist at night. I think broad daylight, running in like that, smashing everything up in front of witnesses, completely unprofessional, but definitely they could have learned where the alarm system was if there was sensors and how those could have been deactivated. So my take on this uh, jewel heist from Grand Theft Auto V, I think this story dragged a lot. If you like a novel, you'd have fun reading it. Not very realistic and uh, frankly, a little disappointed. But thanks for hanging out with me. And if you'd like to see more Gameology reviews, tune into Gameology's YouTube channel and the Facebook page. Till then, see you around. And we're going for about how long on this clip? Oh, this is actually the longest one. This is 16 minutes and 17 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get some more. <laughs> right on. No, this is fun.